All right, this is a uh, quick demo of a Raspberry Pi 3 and a Hawkeye 608 current sensor. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is counting, is timing the, the on time of and accumulating the on time for current with set with a threshold with this Hawkeye 608. These are, there's a lot of these on eBay for under ten dollars, they uh, the this one I got for eight dollars I think on eBay, and it appears to have never been used. It has a threshold adjustment where you can set the current threshold. I've got a load over here. This is a 500 watt resistance heater. It's powered by a 120 volt AC off of this power strip. I'm monitoring the current the Raspberry Pi consumes. So if we look at this right now, you can see we've got uh, 4.9 volts and 300 milliamps. So the Raspberry Pi is not a low power device. It's low power compared to 500 watts, but it's not going to run on batteries. But if you're going to use it to monitor a 500 watt load, it's probably not going to be a big deal for you. Uh, I've set the threshold on this Hawkeye sensor so that when I turn the load on, it'll turn on. So, and over on the left hand side, I'm writing a little Python script that uh, basically just loops on a pin uh, that's configured in pull up, Raspberry Pi pull up mode. When it sees uh, the contact close in this uh, 608 sensor, it's going to light that LED on a GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi and it's going to start timing. So let's watch and see what happens. Let's see, we've got uh, 150, 166 degrees F on that, on that heater now and we're on and I should have started the timer but let's just uh, wait for few seconds. Uh, this is uh, left hand side is an SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi to this uh, Windows machine running Windows here and this uh, monitoring machine can be anywhere and that is one of the nicest features about using the Raspberry Pi is that if you have the sensors hooked up you don't have to think ahead very far because you can develop the code remotely just as well as you can develop it locally. So we can see the the Hawkeye sensor has a little LED on it too and it's completely isolated from the power line. It doesn't get any power from the Raspberry Pi. It's able to steal enough power from the uh, electric field uh, going through the sensor to light up that LED. So you can set the threshold on this without uh, any instrumentation or any test equipment. You just turn the, uh, has a 20 turn pot. You turn the pot till it lights up. It has a open and closed LED to set that threshold. Let's see where we're at on temperature. Okay, we're at 400, 500, 600 degrees. So I probably don't really want to burn something up. So let's turn this off. And the Python script says 91 seconds with excessive precision there. Uh, so we're looking at 91 seconds on time and the accumulated time is, is identical in this case. Let's move this over a little bit. And then if I turn it on again, let's uh, start the timer. Let's turn it on for 10 seconds. So we should have 101 if I if I'm if I'm good with my with my timing, and we've got 11 seconds uh, new and 102. So that adds up. So if you were to monitor a uh, hot water heater, water pump, furnace motor, or whatever it is that you want to keep track of the duty cycle, if you know the the power consumption for those devices when they're on then you can just multiply the number of seconds on 
by the power per second and you can get daily usage you can find when the peaks are and all of that kind of stuff with just a digital input we don't need to make an analog sensor and with these low-cost Hawkeyes on eBay you don't have to build a circuit to sense uh, that something's turned on or not so uh, that's the the Hawkeye to the Raspberry Pi well here might as well look at the uh, source code for this so this is uh, uh, the RPI GPIO library which runs in user mode you don't have to be root and so I don't know what this set warnings does uh, we're s and there must be more than one GPIO mode so these are boilerplate this is boilerplate code I'm setting pin 18 as an output which is what lights the LED and I'm setting pin 26 as an input with a pull-up so uh, that means that when the when the Hawkeye sensor is off it's high impedance and it'll be pulled up and then when the when it sees current it's going to pull that down and uh, and then I loop forever and I look at the current input versus the previous input to do edge detection so I can determine that it that, that it went from on to off or off to on and if the input is one that means it's off in other words it's pulled up so I turn the LED off with that statement then uh, if previously it was zero meaning it was on previously so the Hawkeye sensor pulled the input down then I will grab the time and then I'll subtract the off from the on time and that will give me uh, I can use that to accumulate the total time since the programs are running and then I can also look at the most recent time if the input is has just been uh, pulled down so that the load has been turned on the source power has been turned on then uh, I turn the LED on if it was previously off then I start timing the on time and that's all there is to this this is a, a, a crude very inefficient method I think there's a way to use interrupts in Python that uh, from GPIO that we may be able to use so that we can have a bunch of different uh, sensors on and off sensors that can be kept track of time uh, for but uh, this is just the beginning this is the Hawkeye 608 sensor let's have a, a closer look at this just for fun so this is a split connection a split sensor so it's real easy to install and it has uh, a threshold adjustment and uh, two set screw uh, terminals it's real simple very handy isolated safe nicely encapsulated it's a cool little thing and this is a Raspberry Pi 3 it's February 28, 2017.